today we're having another look at the piece that puts all the intervals we've learned so far, the thirds and the fourths, into practice. So you're going to have thirds across strings, fourths across strings, but also thirds and fourths on the same string. So, look ahead, be ready, float the right finger patterns in place and drop as many fingers as you can in the right place at the same time. Yeah. Now today we're going to pay attention a little bit to the bowing. I mentioned last time that uh, after each rest I suggest you retake the bow um, just because it makes it easier if you know exactly what you're going to do. Yeah, that a down bow is always a down bow, an up bow is always an up bow. And later on when you really know your piece and you want to make small changes, it's fairly easy. However, if you learn a piece and you do always something different, then it's going to slow down how fast you can learn the piece. Um, there's a few things I want to mention. First of all, we're still going to speed up this piece quite a lot. We're only at 50 at the moment, we're going to go to 120. So, I suggest you keep that in mind. And don't use a whole bow for every single quarter note, every single crotchet, yeah? Because once we get to 120, that would be ridiculous. It would be way too fast. And if you've learned it with your string changes being at the tip and at the heel, then when you have to eventually start reducing the amount of bow you use, it will every single time feel different where your string changes are. And it won't be as clean as it could be. Yeah, if you keep in mind now we're only going to use, for example, the upper half of the bow for most of the piece, if not the whole piece, and you practice it that way, even at 50, then when you speed things up, you can stick to what you practiced. And then it will be much cleaner when you know your string changes perfectly. Now on top of that we have a few really difficult string changes. At the end of the fourth bar we have a up bow T on the A string. And then we have to rotate cleanly to the open G. Yeah, so there are a couple of exercises. chapter one where you can practice stuff like that. Have a look at it if you haven't done them already. Uh, there's a much more difficult one later on when we go from the A on the G string all the way to the open E string. So try this a few times before you start the piece and cheat. Yeah. That note before the string change, make it half a beat shorter. Make it one and a half beats instead of two beats. And use that half beat you have to quickly, but silently, as silently as possible at least, rotate to where you need to be so you are you're arrived there before you need it. Yeah? You're going to start making string change when you're already supposed to be playing the next note, you're too late. Always look ahead. Just like we have to look ahead with the finger patterns, we have to look ahead for difficult string changes as well. So that's what we're paying attention to today. Let's give it a go. At 50. Straight in. One, two, three, four.
So pay attention to those big string changes and over time you cut down on the gaps you create. In the beginning all that matters is that you have you're ready for what comes next, yeah? Making the gap smaller comes with experience. Um, but of course practice it a lot of times. Begin before you start the exercise a couple of times. Those string changes Make sure that you're warmed up, that you pay attention to how your arm moves, and then apply it to the piece. And even at this speed, of course, don't just focus on the right bowing. We still have to drop the finger patterns, as many fingers as possible, at the same time, in the right place. I'll see you at the next one. Bye.